The latest split-second calibrators use TunerPro automobile tuning software available on the web at tunerpro.net. Download this software and run the setup application to install TunerPro on your computer. TunerPro is donationware and we strongly recommend you support the author of this software by registering and making a donation on their registration page. When the download completes, run the setup application to install TunerPro. An icon for TunerPro should show up on your desktop. TunerPro requires calibrator-specific files, which you can download from the Splitsecond website. We're using an AIC2P for demonstration purposes here. After obtaining the files in a .zip archive for your particular calibrator, we recommend that you set the read-only flag on the archive to prevent inadvertent modification of the original files. Next, extract all files from this archive as your working copies. We are now ready to connect the calibrator to the computer. Note that we don't need to have the calibrator wired into the electrical system of the vehicle yet. The calibrator can be powered from the USB port directly. First, remove the plug covering the USB port on the calibrator. Then connect a mini B USB cable from the port to your computer. You should see a status light flashing at about a one second rate. The first time you connect a split second calibrator to your computer, Windows should install the necessary drivers automatically if they are not already present. To confirm that the driver was installed, you can go to the Device Manager control panel and look for the USB controller USB Serial Converter. This driver is by FTDI. Additionally, you should see a COM port called USB Serial Port. If the USB Serial Converter does not show up in the Device Manager, you can download FTDI's VCP drivers directly from their website. Be sure to follow the installation guide for the particular operating system you're installing them on. We are now ready to talk to the calibrator with TunerPro. This will require three files specific to the calibrator. The first file is a bin file. It is a snapshot of the configuration of the calibrator. Next is the XDF file, or XDEF. It represents a roadmap to all of the configuration parameters in the bin. And finally, the ADX file, which provides data acquisition, dashboard, and real-time trace definitions. Note in the case of the AIC2, there are two versions of the bin file, one for the AIC2V and another for the AIC2P. We will be using the P bin file. We are now ready to launch TunerPro. If there's a calibrator connected, its model and version number will be listed next to hardware in the lower left corner of the TunerPro window. If this is the first time you have launched TunerPro, there are preferences that need to be set for proper communication with the calibrator. Under General Preferences, we suggest you turn off the Color Table Cells option. Next, under Data Acquisition and Logging, we need to set the interface type to Use Plugin. With the plugin component TunerPro Data Acquisition I.O. Interface showing, further configure the plugin Port Type to Shared with Emulator. And under Emulation, the plugin component should be set to TunerPro Emulator Interface. Finally, be sure to set Upload Whole Tables on. Now we are ready to open the calibrator files, making sure we use the working copies, not the originals. First, the bin file. Next, the XDF file. And finally, the ADX file. TunerPro remembers the last set of files, so when you next launch it, these same files will be used. The bin file we loaded is intended to be representative of the internal configuration of the calibrator. However, editing it in TunerPro does not change the corresponding parameters in the calibrator unless emulation is turned on. This will be indicated by a green emulating enunciator. We cannot stress this enough. You must have emulation on to affect changes to the calibrator parameters. 
Otherwise, you will be viewing configurations that don't represent the true state of the device. This can be very confusing. A good habit to get into is toggling emulation on immediately upon starting Tuner Pro, and there is a convenient button on the toolbar to do this. Right after turning on emulation, it is good to start the data acquisition scan that receives real-time data from the calibrator. This will be indicated by a blue DA Connected Annunciator. The data received is used to provide dashboard displays and table trace display, both described later. Starting the data scan can also be done with a button in the toolbar. Tuner Pro provides access to three types of parameters within the bin. Scalars, which are single numeric quantities, integer or floating point, flags, simple on-off switches, and tables, one or two-dimensional spreadsheet-like arrays of numbers. You will also find items called patches, which are primarily used here for informational purposes. Most parameters have descriptions that you can view by hovering the cursor over them. Double-clicking a parameter will open it. You can then change it and upload it to the calibrator. If the button does not explicitly indicate update or upload, then it will not be written to the calibrator, only to the local bin data in the computer. Be sure emulation is on to upload parameters. As with scalars, flags can be viewed and changed, then uploaded. Tables are more involved. After editing a value in a table, you must confirm the edit by either pressing the tab key or move to another cell with an arrow key. If the edit is displayed in red, then the value is confirmed. You can then click the Commit Changes and Upload button to write it to the calibrator. By editing, committing, and uploading parameters, you have altered the bin data in the computer's memory and their corresponding values in the calibrator because emulation was enabled. If you wish to preserve your local bin snapshot as edited, you need to save these changes. Use either the File menu Save Bin command or the Save Bin button in the toolbar. If there exist changes in the bin as compared to the last saved version, an asterisk will appear next to its name in the title bar. Saving clears this indication. You can also create a differently named copy with the Save Bin As menu command. To capture the current complete configuration of the calibrator to your computer, you can download the entire bin in one operation by clicking the Download Bin from Emulator to Tuner Pro button. Likewise, you can upload a complete calibrator configuration from the bin currently loaded in Tuner Pro with the Upload Current Bin to Emulator button. Any difference in the configuration will take effect immediately, so if the calibrator is controlling a running engine, there can be sudden changes in its operation. Because the correct operation of the calibrator is dependent on the exact correspondence of binary data in the bin file, and its mapping for the model and version of the calibrator, you must use the XDF roadmap that was designed for your calibrator. Never modify the XDF file's parameter definitions, nor modify the bin data outside of Tuner Pro or with a different XDF file. An important feature of Tuner Pro is the ability to receive real-time data from the calibrator for display while tuning. Dashboards are panels of virtual gauges and indicators that present this data while the calibrator is operating and the USB connection is established. You can detach dashboards from the main Tuner Pro window to provide side-by-side -side viewing while editing parameters by turning on the Floating Utility tab setting. Dashboards are provided in both SI and US units. There is also a voltage-only dashboard for applications where inputs are not converted to their external physical units. In addition to dashboard display of real-time data, you can also turn on data tracing, whereby the current operating point within a table is traced out with a marker. This provides tuning feedback more in context with the particular parameters involved. 